from Boston, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering WTG Transform 2019. Brought to you by Winslow Technology Group. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is theCUBE at WTG Transform 2019 here home game in Boston, Massachusetts. Our third year of the event, happen to welcome back to the program, second time on the program. It is. Uh, in less than a year, Matt Koslowski, who's the Vice President of Professional Services at Winslow Technology Group. Matt, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right, uh, second tie I've had on the program, but first vest and cufflinks yeah, you uh, like today. That? <laughs> so, uh, you know, showing your own individual style. Going for like the TED Talk look. <laughs> uh, absolutely, so we will keep this under 18 minutes. Okay. It'll probably be more like about 12 there, so, <laughs> and uh, no slides. Okay. Uh, but, um, you know, tell us a deep story of change <laughs> and inspiration. Uh, uh, but Matt, uh, you know, in all seriousness there, um, what I actually want to hear is the, the story of change in, uh, that we're seeing inside of Winslow Tech. So, um, you know, question I asked uh, you know some of your peers in the company is you know if, if I thought about Winslow Tech you know uh, just a couple of years ago it's like oh hey yeah great Dell partner know the repellent side you know picking up the servers and some of the other pieces here, yeah here you bring it on board on board you know professional services security uh, you know tell us a little bit about you know what what, what we're doing uh, since the last time we caught up sure so um, if you think about um, years ago uh, where we, not just Winslow, but like VARS as a whole came from, um, it was like uh, we sell boxes and we sell things. And um, now we're transitioning where people are using cloud or the hybrid cloud models and they're actually using software and infrastructure as services. And um, you know, we need like professional services and consulting to help people um, on that journey. That's like the simplified version of it. I'd yeah, say. And, and, and just, uh, you know, I, I, I want to play something back for you and see if sure. it resonates with you. Uh, you know, if, if I go back, you know, let's say five to 10 years ago, it was, you know, we get the boxes and the VAR gets it. And they got to spend a lot of work to configure it and do all the pieces. And, you know, that kind of day one rollout when we talked about, okay, how many months from when the equipment <laughs> got to the VAR versus when we are up and running? Yeah when we rolled out converged infrastructure, hyper-converged infrastructure, and all this cloudy stuff, it actually shifted things backwards. Yeah. Now before it gets there, there's a lot of work that either the customer or the partner mm -hmm. with the customer needs to do. So it shifted it because once it gets on site, well, there's less wiring and cabling and configuration I need to do, yeah. but it just shifted where that engagement and service happened. Sure. It did not eliminate it. Is sure. that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. so there's a lot um, in terms of like planning I um, mean, even like integration work that we do ahead of time. I would say um, things that have changed even over the last like three or four years is like the complexity of everything has gone up. Like we're trying to simplify IT, we're simplifying maybe the delivery of it to end users, but behind the scenes, um, certainly it's, it's, it's more complicated, I would say, than, than ever. Yeah, so. you know, it's uh, it, we're no longer just yeah, you know, let's lock the door and have physical security and yeah. put the firewall in place. Yeah, it's like, yeah, right. Now it's like, oh well, it's micro segmentation in all the places, and my applications spread out uh, across you know how many locations yeah. or how many services, right. um, and therefore, uh, right, everything's become a little bit more mm -hmm. more complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, so, how do we make sure we stay secure in 2019? Um, so I think there's a couple areas there. So first is like maintaining that same kind of sense of um, securing people, infrastructure, and things along those lines that we've kind of been doing for a while now. The, your basic like firewalls and even vulnerability assessments and things like that. But um, I think um, over the last like couple years and this, as we move to like more of a like distributed workforce, like people working from home, people working remotely, finding like the right people, there's going to be more of a focus on like endpoint protection and like protecting users at like the endpoint or the mobile level um, than, than ever before. Right. All right. Um, there's a lot of talk in the keynote this morning about mm -hmm. cloud. Yeah. And, and you said, you know, where, where does that put things? So, uh, you know, give us from your <laughs> standpoint, you know, obviously services are a hugely yeah. important piece of it. Uh, you know, how, as, as the, the box and the location becomes a little bit less important, mm -hmm. despite the fact that even when you have things like serverless, we, we know that there's ultimately hardware sure. that runs underneath it mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, wh wh where, where does Winslow play today and in, in, in the future? Okay, so I'm going to give you two kind of conflicting answers okay. to that. So the first one um, is if you look at um, reasons why people don't go to the cloud, it's they're not comfortable in the security of it. Um, I'll say in like the my like real world, not in the academic or statistical version of it. One of the reasons people do go to the cloud is for security, <laughs> right? 
Um, look at um, uh, like a lot of healthcare organizations are going to like cloud-based electronic medical record systems. Um, I feel like that in some ways has insulated or shifted some of the burden of the risk in keeping those systems secure um, to the provider that's hosting them, which is probably better for us as patients, right, and for the healthcare providers in general in that case. Yeah, so. uh, you know, w w one of the things we know is that uh, what you need to do as a user is you can't just keep doing things the old way right. because your competition will move faster. Right. And we know from a security standpoint, you know, my friends that are deep in security is like, you need to be able to move fast. One of the great things about the cloud is, you know, if I'm running on Azure or AWS, hey, that latest, latest patch and that security vulnerability, did that get rolled out? <laughs> um, well, I'm not responsible. Yes, they absolutely did. <laughs> right. I didn't have to wait for that yeah. rollout. Yeah. Um, you know, so 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 there's uh, that piece of it. So you know, just how do I keep up with change? I need to, as 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 user, do some updates, and therefore I'm not saying everything goes in the public cloud, but. Um, how do I make sure that it's not, oh, I update my software every two years, sure. it's I need to make sure that I'm closing those gaps and vulnerabilities and taking advantage of things I, where it's needed. I think um, there's going to be like a shift in changing from like normal sysadmins are thinking about like patching Windows and patching Linux and operating systems, but like um, once we move information to the cloud, if you think about it more as like information security, so now data is in the cloud, I'm not patching the systems anymore because we'll just assume that you know, AWS, Microsoft, they're doing a great job at that. Um, but like once data, say, is in OneDrive, like how am I governing like where that data is going, who's accessing it, who it's being shared with, how it's being backed up, things along those lines. Um, it's just a different mindset that people need to adopt it, you know, in relation to securing information, not systems. All right, man, I'm, I'm trying to figure, we got to replace <laughs> Patch Tuesday with some celebration or some <laughs> gathering event uh, where we, we can try to tackle some of, the, some of these new challenges there. Um, you know, what, what does that mean to some of the changing roles that you're seeing in the customers though? I, I guess here, here at Winslow Tech, uh, you know, I was, I was talking to Arctic mm -hmm. Wolf and you know, the typical customer, you know, doesn't have their whole, you know, security team that runs 24 mm -hmm. seven, uh, that, that's where you're partnering with them. Sure. So, you know, where, where does security fit in the organization? As I said, if it was a mm -hmm. large enterprise, you know, it's a board level discussion, mm -hmm. you know, you've got your CISO or mm -hmm. somebody like that. What does the typical kind of mid to small size company security team look like? Yeah, it looks like um, I'm going to partner with someone, yeah. or that's what it should look like. Because, um, like, even if companies have like a managed provider that's doing like patch management and things along those lines, um, there's something to be said for having like a third party and another party, party like as your security partner. Because if the people that are like doing the patching, they're probably doing a great job at it. But like, you might not want them being the ones also doing like your vulnerability assessments. It, it's good to have like different parties in there. So um, I feel like for smaller, medium businesses, it's getting comfortable partnering um, and using like professional services, frankly, to, to do that. All right, so it's really interesting, Matt. Next week, actually, Amazon is holding a cloud security show here yeah. in Boston uh, called, called Reinforce. So, uh, you know, Boston seems an interesting place. You know, the RSA <laughs> conference has always been out in San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, give us kind of the state of security here in the area. Okay, so I think I have a unique perspective on this because I'm not from the area. Yeah. Like I'm from Connecticut, so um, I, I come up here. Um, you, you realize most people in, in, in the United States would be like, Connecticut, isn't that just a suburb of Boston? <laughs> uh, either that or, or New, New York. York. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> that's, that's the one. Uh, you, um, you need to know, where are you on the Yankee Red Sox <laughs> line uh, that goes down the middle of the state, right, at, right around Hartford? That's, so. Yeah, our, yeah. Our, our like claim to fame is being in between both cities, so <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we do see though, um, like Boston emerging as like a regional tech hub um, if not like the tech hub of the East Coast, frankly. Um, so I feel like why not have it here? Like why wouldn't we have it here compared to everywhere else? Like there's so many tech companies and this just does feel like a tech hub. Um, you know, of the, of the region, certainly. Okay, well, you know, Matt, I, I, I'm all in favor of things where I can take the <laughs> train or drive to rather than have to fly around the globe for these <laughs> events, so I'm hugely supportive. Uh, you gave a session here uh, and uh, talked about some ransomware. G give, give us uh, some of the key takeaways and uh, things for the audience that they, they should be thinking sure. about today. So, so in that session, I kind of invented a completely fictional account of a ransomware attack on a hospital. It was built on real world scenarios that I just kind of like merged together. So I would say upfront um, things that I would say that were important to talk about in that were, you know, cybersecurity awareness training, um, making sure people, um, you know, are understand like the risks involved with email security, um, advanced like modern endpoint protection. We kind of touched on that a little bit earlier. So like 
older signature-based detection is just not, not really effective anymore. Um, having a good tamper-proof backup strategy is important too. So let's say like systems get ransomware and everything's encrypted, like you need a way to restore that data without necessarily paying the ransom. Um, and like tamper-proof backups are, are the, the way to do that really, so. All right, Matt, I want to give you the final word. Uh, WTG Transform uh, 2019, uh, give us a little insight, some of the customers you're talking to, some of the top of mind issues, or any yeah. final word. Um, I, for me, a lot of the top of mind issues around security, seriously, um, but also like modernizing people's data centers. So that delivering on the hybrid cloud message of like installing a hardware and software that not just provides like data storage services on-prem, but can do a lot of cloud tiering or cloud archiving also. Well, Matt Kozlowski, really appreciate the updates. Thank you much thank for you, sharing Steve. with yeah, our audience. Appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank our audience here. We've had a full day here, got to talk to some of the users, some of the partners, and of course our host for the event, Winslow Technology Group, uh, Scott Winslow and the team. Uh, great to see the growth. Always love to be able to dig in uh, with the users and what's happening locally. Uh, for myself, Stu Miniman, want to thank the whole team here at theCUBE uh, for, for helping us to be able to uh, support these events. And be sure to check out thecube.net. Uh, you can do some searches there, you can find all the guests here and see previously what they've been talking about, see what future events we're going at and dig through our archive. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself, the rest of the team, and uh, always a pleasure to be able to share with you and thank you for watching theCUBE.